everyone, and welcome to Moosehead Observatory. If you're like me and occasionally you travel around with your telescope and you need to move it from point A to point B, you're going to want to have a case for your telescope. And most of the smaller telescopes that's fairly easy to do. You can buy a case online from a number of different sources or you can adapt a case. When you've got something as big as a Celestron 11 inch CPC Edge HD, your choices are a little bit limited. Now some people may say, well you could get a JMI case. They make a case for the CPC 11 inch telescope, but if you carefully read the website, it states that you need to measure the distance between the fork arms. If it's greater than a certain distance, their case will not fit. And it turns out where the Edge HD will not fit. So what other options do you have? Well, I started looking around at various large toolboxes. And I also did a search on the internet on Cloudy Nights and a couple other sites and I found that there was a Stanley toolbox that at one time was big enough and there was also a Husky toolbox made by Home Depot that seemed to be large enough. So I decided to take a run to my local Home Depot store which for me is over a hundred miles away because I live way up in the sticks. And I went up and looked at some toolboxes and the one I selected was made by DeWalt. Let's take a look at that toolbox now. So this is the DeWalt toolbox. It's called a tough chest and it really is pretty sturdy. And overall dimensions here oh, roughly 25 inches by 19 and a half by roughly 24 inches. As you can see, it's, it sits tall enough that you can actually use this as a table once you take your telescope out and you're on site. And you can also use this as a chair to sit on while you're uh, drinking your favorite beverage or waiting on your camera to take a picture or something like that. It has these big sturdy latches on the side and it also has a set of wheels down here on the bottom. Now these wheels are not the best in the world, but they do a job and especially when you look at the JMI case is roughly $800, even though it won't fit this scope, it still just shows you that $100 is a pretty good value. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so this is the inside of the case, and I've taken some foam and mounted it onto the very bottom because the scope is going to go in there and sit on the very bottom with the fork arms on there. And then once I get the scope in there, I'm going to make some additional pieces of foam to go in here and to support everything. I also took a piece of fairly thin foam, half inch, and I glued it to the very bottom portion here where the wheels are. So let's take a look at how the scope fits in there and let's work on the rest of this and get it ready to completely take our scope from point A to point B. I am going to take my finder scope and tell rad off of the main scope. 
I'm also going to take off my star diagonal. I'll cover the rear of the star diagonal opening port. And then to remove the scope from the tripod, you just remove the three screws on the bottom. In order to fit in here, it needs to go in there just a little bit tilted to one side. And now I'm evaluating where I can put foam. So here's how it looks inside the case. You can see it's a tight fit. It fits all the way towards the bottom down there. And because I have this electronic focuser up here, at the eyepiece end of the tube, it fits pretty tightly into the top. But it does fit completely within this case. And I think the best solution is going to be just to make some foam inserts to go in and around the tube. I'm not going to be able to make a foam cutout that goes all the way around because the case just isn't large enough. But I think I can make some foam inserts and that will help to pad it and prevent any shocks as we're traveling down the road. So let me get started on that. Okay, so here we are. We have foam packed on the sides. And then we have a piece of white foam that came as part of the shipping case up at the eyepiece end of the scope. And then a couple of extra pieces down towards the base of the scope. And then I have a piece of foam. Now the stuff on the side is called polyethylene foam. And it's a little bit more dense than your simple type of foam like this stuff. But I'm going to use this on the top. Just tuck it in like that. And then the case. Latches down like that. It does have a handle down on this end that you can pick it up and then you can move it from point A to point B. It's advisable to only let it sit either on the base or on the bottom over there so that you're not tilting your case up onto the eyepiece end, but as you can see this makes a pretty good seat so you can sit down. You can also put your star charts here, things like that. So this makes a really good little table for out in the field even after you take the scope out and put it onto the tripod. As I say, you can uh, stand it up on end. You could put it on a rolling dolly, take it out to the truck, and then in order to get it into the truck, just put this by the bed of the truck and tilt it up into the truck. Don't try and manhandle this thing, because the case itself weighs about 20 pounds, and then the scope, of course, is about 70 pounds. Now, there's enough room left in here to be able to include the, the flexible dew shield, and then the other things like the Telrad and the finder scope, I'll put those away in my other cases. So that's how to do a custom case for your Celestron CPC 11 inch Edge HD telescope. I paid $100 for the DeWalt case at Home Depot. I think it was $99.99. You may be able to get it cheaper if you watch for sales and things like that. Uh, I did look on Amazon, it was roughly the same price, maybe a couple dollars more to help cover the extra shipping cost. If you haven't seen the video about the hoist on how I get the scope on and off the tripod, I'll link that up here in the corner. And I would suggest you also watch that video because if you're getting older like I am, or you're short, or various other reasons, 
it's advisable to have a way to get this thing on and off the tripod without straining your back or dropping the scope. So if you would, please give us that thumbs up icon. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And we'll see you back here again on Moosehead Observatory very soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye.